Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that we link with the summer transfer and move to Arsenal. Now, when is Socrates going to be announced by Arsenal? What are they waiting for? Oh my God, this... We always draw out these transfers so, so long at Arsenal. He was there last week, right? He's done his medical. He's probably done all the pictures, everything like that, because he's at the training ground. What are they waiting for? Just really, you know, get the thing out there. With Socrates sign, hold the shirt up, get it out. It does look, though, that he's going to be the second signing. Now, will it be announced um, this week? Because, um, you know, we're, we're only a few days away now from the World Cup. And um, at the start of the transfer window, there was a lot of talk that Arsenal were going to try and get, like, a, a lot of their signings done before the start of the World Cup. Um, and at the moment, Lichsteiner, done. You know, called a kind of a, a, a easy one to do because he's... Uh, it's a free contract, um, you know, free deal. His contract's come to an end. So easy one to get over the line. All you've got to do really is negotiate with the player. So very simple to do. And uh, there's Socrates one, all right. Then there's negotiations to be done with Dortmund and everything. But he had a one year left on his deal. Not too difficult to get done, really, as long as the price is right. And uh, that price is said to be around about £15 million. And Socrates, I reckon will probably get announced uh, next week, unless there's a last-minute hiccup on it, a bit like the Nabil Fakir to Liverpool one. You never can tell with these things. Things can happen at the last minute. But from what I understand, with the Socrates one, as I said, he was at the training ground last week, pictures done, everything done. They're just waiting to announce it. Maybe they withheld it a bit because they had that whole Puma kit launch thing last week. So maybe they're just thinking, no, let's get all that, you know, we have to get all that out of the way. At Lichstein as well, next week, free week, at the start of the week, we'll do the Socrates thing. But hopefully that should get announced early this week, which means we get a centre back in. But are we going to get anybody else done before the start of the World Cup? Because as I've said before, World Cups can be a strange one in that you can have a player just really be brilliant in the World Cup, just emerge from the World Cup and then his price just goes shooting right up. Remember the last World Cup, James Rodriguez was a known player, but after winning the golden boot at the tournament, you know, he went for astronomical money. So this is one of the reasons why it's always good to try and get players that you've identified that may figure in the World Cup done before the World Cup starts. Now, one of the players that's going to be in the World Cup, and I'm wondering, could this be something that they get done before? is the player that I spoke about yesterday, Lucas Torreira. Now, Torreira, or Torreira, um, he's a Uruguayan international, uh, plays currently for Sampdoria, 22 defensive midfielder. I spoke about him yesterday, he said he's a really tough tackling player. Really interesting yesterday that he, uh, he emerged that he's following Arsenal and Mesut Ozil on Instagram. <laughs> The fans always jump in and pick up these things really, really quick. But he is following those two on, on Instagram. Hence a lot of fans saying, right, that's it. He's definitely coming. Uh, remember, Bamiyang, he followed all these guys on Instagram and he came. Doesn't always mean that the player's coming. But certainly it looks like there's a lot of very, very strong interest on this one. Um, there are other teams interested as well. Napoli, a um, couple other teams out there that are, that are sniffing around as well. So... Again, if Arsenal are going to get this one done, maybe they have to move quick. £22 million, which is not a lot of money for a top player. And, um, you know, this guy is really highly rated. Uh, you know, even though he's 22, he's played a lot of games for Sampdoria and he's very highly rated. Now, could this get done before the World Cup begins? Because as I said, if the World Cup starts and this guy has a blinding competition, that £22 million could switch and go up to about 35 40 so, will Arsenal get that one done if the, the, all the rumours about it are true? We're going to have to wait and see if there's any movement on that this week. And then again, he's away now. Surely he's away now with the Uruguayan squad. So, maybe you can agree things, but can you get a player like that signed? How are you going to do the medical in that? I suppose you could go over there and do it. I really don't know what the ins and outs of that would be. Um, 
Arsenal being linked again today with uh, Abdoulaye Ducouré, who plays for Watford. Now, again, I really like this guy. I think he's a very, very good player. I, I saw him in a lot of games last season, and I was really, really impressed with him. Not only is he good defensively, uh, he can pick a pass, he, he, he can get go past players. He's very strong, and of course, he knows the Premier League from being here last season with Watford. And he's one of Watford's real standout players. And I, I think he's ready for a higher level. And um, we're being linked with him again today. Um, the price to get that done was probably be a, um, a similar sort of thing price to the Lucas Toria one, where it probably you're probably talking about, I don't know, anything between 20 to 30 million pounds. Probably seems a lot of money for Decore, but I, I do think this guy is in a real emerging talent. So lots of links with him again today. I don't think that'll be an easy one to get done because Watford won't want to let him go. But then Watford are the sort of club that they will move on players and bring the next player in. You know, I mean, they've done that with a lot of the players they bought over the years. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that one develops any further um, from just the rumours that we're hearing. And then what happens with Jack Wilshire? Still up in the air. Uh, we're talking about it um, every day, but emerging today that Juventus are interested in signing Jack Wilshire. Um, reports coming out of the Italian media that Juventus uh, willing to offer him a deal worth up to uh, 4.5 million euros. Of course, Jack Wilshire will be available on a free contract, so there'll be no fee to pay for Arsenal. Uh, we know that Arsenal have offered Jack Wilshire a deal, but as of yet, he's not signed it. It's not been done or not been agreed. And this is a real conundrum. Is Jack Wilshire going to remain at Arsenal or is Jack Wilshire going to go? Certainly, as I keep saying, I just don't see the point in him going right now on a free. That we lose a player like Jack Wilshire, that's a, a top player, for nothing. Just doesn't seem to make sense. A, a player that we've had that we've brought up all the way through the ranks. Even if we were to sell him on, he, you know, it would make sense to sign him onto a contract, get him playing in the team, and then, you know, hopefully if it didn't work out, then sell him on for a profit. But for him to just go, go away for free, but then contract's ended, it's his decision now. It's Jack Wilshire's decision where he plays his football next season. And he may be looking at it and saying, listen, I want to be guaranteed that I start week in, week out. And is Unai Emery going to guarantee him that? I don't think he is at the moment. I don't think Jack Wilshire, you could say at the moment, would start every week. You know what I mean? There's going to be a lot of competition. Midfield area is always that position where there's loads and loads of competition for places. So, going to be interesting that one. And then also we have Aaron Ramsey. The talk is that that one's looking a lot better, that uh, you know he's been offered a, a bumper contract and that he's uh, looking like he's willing to sign that and that he will remain an Arsenal player. And there's even a lot of talk that he could be made the new captain of Arsenal. Unai Emery, as uh, we've said before on the show, would like to build um, his team around him. So, more promising on that front with the Ramsey one. And you sort of notice that not a lot of teams have been really linked with Ramsey. But with Wilshire, the links are coming in thick and fast. There was West Ham, there was Crystal Palace, but now Juventus. I mean, if Juventus are in for Jack Wilshire, that would be something really tempting for him. So let's wait and see um, how that develops. Now, a link today with uh, a player, plays his uh, football um, for Mainz. And uh, this guy, again, is another one of those sort of players that Sven Mislintat has looked at and really likes. Um, Philip Gabim, his name is, or Gabamim. Um, I don't know a lot about him, but he's a 22-year-old uh, midfielder, defensive midfielder. So he's still young. Uh, a real prospect, being eyed by lots and lots of clubs um, across Europe, we're being told. And what is uh, really attracting Arsenal to him is the fact that he's very versatile. He can play as a centre-back, he can play as a defensive midfielder. Uh, he's valued at around about 30 million euros, so not cheap for um, a prospect. And he, you know, not, he's not exactly at a mega club at the moment in Mainz, but that's his valuation. And uh, Arsenal apparently uh, taking a look at him with, a, with an interest there to perhaps sign in him. And another Uruguayan has emerged um, as a target for Arsenal, according to the media. 
And that is Sebastian Caracas, or Caracas? Oh, you know, my pronunciations on these are not great at Spanish. Or is it Ceresis? He's a defender, um, centre-back. He plays for a team, now this team, very, very interesting name here. He plays for a team in Uruguay called Liverpool FC Montevideo. Right, that's the name of the team. So, Liverpool FC Montevideo. Um, it's interesting that a lot of clubs over in South America adopt uh, English clubs' names. There's actually an Arsenal who play in um, Argentina as well. And uh, Caracas has come out and he said that he's been very flattered by the, the links to Arsenal. Um, there's lots of links linking him to Arsenal. He's still a very young, young player. I think he's 17. Um, but again, another one of those hot prospects. They're calling him the new Diego Godin. And, you know, it's always going to be that way. He's Uruguayan. Um, but he's been linked with Arsenal uh, today. And he's saying he's very flattered by the links. But again, very young player. If he did come at all, that's more, again, as a development sort of prospect player or a player that would probably go out on loan. But um, let's see how that one develops. Now, yesterday, I spoke about Fellaini, Marion Fellaini. And I asked a question to you guys. Um, should we sign him? Would he be a good signing or a bad signing? I spoke about his physicality. I, I spoke about the fact that he can be a good impact player. Uh, I was chatting about how me and DT was doing a podcast and he was he's just not having Fellaini at all. He's like, I don't want him nowhere near the club. Uh, United fans laughing about it. Um, the poll was quite interesting. It, not as uh, wide as I thought it would be. 40% uh, of you said it'd be a good signing. 60% said no, you don't want him. So, obviously the majority of fans don't want him. But not as wide as, you know, I thought it might be. I remember when I did the poll on Arteta. And I said, you know, would you like Mich Mikel Arteta as the new manager of Arsenal, I think it was something like about 80% said no. So this one's 60. You know, the club could be looking at it and thinking, well, if we get around about 50-50 and, you know. So, but um, for Lady, certainly that's still uh, out there. That's still, you know, one that's being linked. Um, I know he's not universally popular as a signing at Arsenal, but could he do a job? It would be really interesting to see for Lady. You couldn't imagine... The lady style of football being played under Arsene Wenger. Oh my God. <laughs> but listen, it's changing times at Arsenal. Who knows what the new style is going to be? We're going to get a chance to have a look at that. Um, I, I, I can't wait, actually, till the friendlies. Um, Arsenal are going to be playing out in Singapore. And, our, and of course, um, AFTV will be out there. But I can't wait to see what sort of style we play under Unai Emery. I cannot wait to see that. Um, listen, thanks for watching the show today. The World Cup starts next week, or should I say this week, uh, as it's Sunday today. The World Cup starts on Thursday, Russia in the first game. We're going out to Russia. We're going to be all over the World Cup. So World Cup updates, World Cup, we're going to be doing the Bias World Cup show, me and troops each and every day. So make sure you check that out. And of course, Transfer Daily, every day from Russia. And we'll be taking a look throughout the World Cup at players that we think, you know what, look at him, man. Why don't we go and get him? He'd be perfect to Arsenal. We're going to be running the rule over loads of players throughout the World Cup. So keep it locked here on Transfer Daily.